Recallbox is a great gaming front end for your Raspberry Pi and they've just released a beta version tailored to the new Raspberry Pi 02W. So let's install it and see how well it performs. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. And I do apologize for my voice, I'm just at the back end of a bit of a cold. But um, there are a number of retro gaming systems for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and if you've been watching my channel, you'll have seen that my first choice has always been Retro Pi. But with the new Raspberry Pi Zero 02 having been released, I've been looking for a gaming front end to release a version which has been tailored to this new device. Now, now the people at Recall Box have done just that. Now their version 8 release, um, it's still in beta uh, and I'm recording this in November 2021. Um, but it's the first that I've seen that has been customised for the new hardware. Now I have made a video on how to get RetroPi working on the Pi 02, but that uses the Pi 3B plus code base, so it's probably not fully optimised to get the most from the new 02. Now, like a lot of retro gaming systems, Recallbox is built on top of Emulation Station and RetroArch. So with some customization and optimization of the Linux kernel, we should at least equal the RetroPie performance, if not hopefully beat it. So let's install Recallbox and see what it's like. So although Recallbox is an option on the Raspberry Pi Imager app, um, not the version 8. To install this, we'll need to go to the Recallbox website. And again, I'll put links to all of these um, web pages and so on in the description down below. Uh, and once you're there, we need to go to the Downloads page. We then select the version 8 stream, and then the Raspberry Pi, and then the Raspberry Pi 02W image. Now once you download that, you'll need the Raspberry Pi Imager app again. So if you haven't already installed this, you need to go to this web address and download and install it. You'll then need a blank microSD card and I'd use at least an 8GB card for a small set of older console games, um, but go for 64 to 128GB if you want a full MAME arcade set and then things like PS1 games and so on. So when you start up the Pi Imager app, you need to click to select the OS. Now if you scroll down to the bottom of this list and select Custom, You'll then be able to go and find your downloaded recall box image. Then select your SD card in the destination area and then burn the image onto your SD card. Now once that's finished, it's time to boot up the system. So plug your SD card into your Raspberry Pi 02 and power it on. Now I haven't installed Recallbox for quite some time, so um, don't get worried like I did about the initial black screen. Um, this is normal and the proper installation starts after a few seconds, so just give it a little bit of time. Now there are some very helpful screens as the installation progresses through, so, so do have a look to find out um, and, and read those. And they give you ideas on the navigation shortcut keys and so on in, in Recallbox. Now the big change for me is that the select and back buttons have been swapped around from RetroPie. So um, I did take a little bit of time to get used to this. So after a while, Recallbox will be installed and you'll be up and running. And I have to admit, um, I was pleasantly surprised when I first saw what it looked like. There's no controller set up. Um, and it seems to recognize any controller that I plug in and adjust itself accordingly. The display is really nice straight out of the box and it comes preloaded with a couple of games in each of the main systems so you don't start with a blank menu which I thought was actually quite a very nice touch. Navigation is easy and the display seems very responsive even on the stock Pi 02. 
Now, although the system does recognize controllers and you can use them straight away, you will need to configure yours to be able to use the hotkeys, such as the normal game exit start um, select combo. So from the main menu, press the start button and then select the controller settings option. Select configure controller and then when you get to the screen, hold down a button to identify your controller to the system. You need to go through the normal setup process by clicking the buttons. When you get to one that you don't have an input for, just use the down button to skip it. Now the important bit is at the bottom where you specify a hotkey. So um, use the select button as this is the standard setting. Then you can click the A button to get back to the main menu. So all that's left is to load some games and see how well it runs. Now if you've got your game ROMs on your main PC, the best way to do this is via the network share. Now I'm going to show you how to do this, but at the moment I find that as soon as I transfer files the Raspberry Pi crashes. So I guess this is one of the issues that needs to be sorted out during this beta testing phase. So you'll need to press the start button on your controller to bring up the menu, then network settings, then enable your Wi-Fi to turn on your connection. And once it's done that, it'll scan to see if it can find your network ID. So once it's done that, if you select Wi-Fi SSID, you should find your wireless network sitting there. So select that one, then come back out and enter your Wi-Fi key. Now the best way to add that is using your keyboard. So type that in, or, or you can use the on-screen selector. But either way, once you've got that put in, you then should find that your ret recall box is connected to your Wi-Fi network. So recall box will automatically set up a network share for you. And to access that, just go into your um, Windows Explorer or, or, or your file manager and just type in so back, slash backslash and it's recall box. And that should take you then onto the network share. And we're actually talking directly to the SD card now on the, on the Raspberry Pi. Now, so sometimes it may ask you for some credentials, but use your normal sort of Pi uh, and Raspberry account to log into that. So inside the share folder, you'll find a number of folders used by Recallbox. And we want to open up the ROMs folder inside which you'll find a separate folder then for each of the game systems that Recall Box is able to emulate. And all you need to do is to drag your ROM files into the relevant folder. So as I said, at the moment, I find the network share option is crashing the Raspberry Pi. So the other way is to simply take the SD card out of your Raspberry Pi and plug it into your PC you'll find a number of disk drives appearing on your system. And it's the share one that we want to look at. And again, you'll see that this is exa exactly the same as we saw over the Wi-Fi connection. So again, inside the ROMs folder, you'll find each of these system folders, and you just simply copy your game ROMs into the relevant one. So let's have a look at some gaming performance. Now from my previous tests, um, I already know that the stock Raspberry Pi Zero 2 will run everything up to and including the Super Nintendo. But if we start off then with the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis games, and now these didn't run at full speed when I tried it on RetroPie. So this is Vectorman, which does stretch the system quite a bit, and it's running here at the full 60 frames per second, and this is on the stock Raspberry Pi Zero 2. Now, now this is a great performance boost from my experience where I used the Pi 3B Plus installation of RetroPie, and on that and the stock Raspberry Pi 2, I was getting around about 40 to 50 frames per second. So moving over to Gunstar Heroes, Again, this is one of the one which does push the Mega Drive, so we are pushing the emulation here. We're getting a full 50 frames per second emulation speed, and again, this is with the stock clock speed. Now, now previously, to get this sort of gaming performance, I had to overclock my Raspberry Pi, and I was running it at 1.4 gigahertz. So this is really looking good for situations where you need to enclose your Pi, such as in a handheld device, where overclocking is going to cause you overheating issues and obviously reduce your battery life. So with full speed Mega Drive under our belts, let's try some PlayStation 1. 
Now Bloody Roar is another game that pushes the emulator, so it's a good test to see what sort of performance we're going to get. And, and again, here we're running at a full 60 frames per second, again with the standard stock clock speed. Uh, and on my RetroPie installation video, um, you can go back there and see that um, I needed to use full overclocking to get this sort of frame rate. Moving on then to Colony Wars, which is another 3D game. So again, it's going to push the processing power requirements. And as you can see, we're running at 60 frames per second, which is the full emulation speed. So from what I'm doing here then, um, PlayStation emulation is working fully at stock clock speeds. And again, that's a real boost from my previous tests on RetroPie using the 3B Plus kernel. So this new tailored kernel does seem to be giving us some significant performance increases. But now for the real test. On my previous RetroPie video, even with full overclocking, I could not get a Nintendo 64 emulator to run at a playable speed. Um, it was close, but not quite there. But using this tailored recall box build, we're getting what looks like almost full speed here on Super Mario 64. Now this is one of the easier games to emulate, but we've actually got a very playable game using this Raspberry Pi Zero 2. Giving it a bit more of a push, if we try to run GoldenEye 007, uh, we very quickly see that we're actually at the limit of the stock machine. Uh, the, the sound and graphics are, are really struggling to keep up with the gameplay, and, and it really isn't a usable system. But again, this is all at the stock clock speed. And to actually have some Nintendo 64 emulation, and um, that really is a first for me on the small Raspberry Pi Zero. So just taking a quick look at the next level up, uh, and PlayStation Portable emulation is right on the limit of the Pi Zero 2. Uh, a running little big planet here, which is one of the easier games to emulate. Uh, and the little Pi Zero is, is doing okay, but you can see that it's starting to slow down when the, street, when the screen starts to get busy. So I, I think the PlayStation Portable emulation is probably still out of reach of even the Pi Zero 2. So that's Recall Box on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Um, it's a great alternative to RetroPie, and I can see why a lot of people prefer its user interface and the whole gaming experience. This beta release is still a bit glitchy, and I did hit quite a few crashes along the way, but again, that, that's to be expected with this state of the software. However, when it does work, it works fantastically well. Uh, full speed PlayStation, Mega Drive, and a bit of the easier Nintendo 64, and all of that at stock clock speeds, really pushes the Raspberry Pi Zero to W up a level in the emulation race. And, and getting this with no overclock will be great news for all the original Pi Zero handheld owners. So you should be able to drop a new Pi Zero 2 into your device and open up some new consoles. So do keep an eye on the Recallbox website to see when this version goes to release. Uh, and for those of us who like RetroPie, it's, it's looking great for when their team gets a customised version ready for the Pi Zero 2, and, and let's hope that that is very soon. Um, although I do have to admit, I do like the recall box now as well. So I hope you found this video useful. Please do like and subscribe to my channel, and check out my main website for more details and more projects. I hope to see you again very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.